Hello again and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to go through how I'm integrating my Lion into real life footage or supposedly real life footage. I've still got to animate the Lion of course, it's just integrating it into the scene for the moment. So I'm going to go through the techniques that I'm using for camera projection. There's lots of different terms that are widely used, camera projection is the more obvious one. There's camera mapping as well and camera tracking and camera tracking is for when you're moving your camera and you've got to track real life footage and track your camera. This is slightly different what I'm doing here. I'm actually projecting a still image onto 3D objects and then moving my camera and it should all look 3D and like it's a proper scene. So this is something that I've not done before. So I'll show you how I'm getting on with my tests in Adobe Premiere and then I'll explain a tiny bit about how I've done it. It's not an in-depth tutorial. If you would like an in-depth tutorial, then comment below and I'll see what I can do. So I'm in Adobe Premiere at the moment and that's the program I'm using just to compile them. It's just a bit quicker and I can put them all on one timeline nice and easily. And it's because I'm used to Adobe Premiere, but you can easily do this in Blender as well. So here's the first piece of footage and it's just a still plate. They're called background plates because people actually used to paint on big transparent plates in the past. So I'm calling it a background plate, but it's just a background image. And the first test was just to see whether the line was going to integrate into the scene. So all I wanted to do was test some reflections and I want to see whether the shadow was going to work. And you can see the shadow around here. It's very slight, but it's not a very sort of hard light situation. So it's very soft light that creates very soft shadows. So I think that's just about the right shadow, to be honest. But the background plate or the background footage looks very still. And I thought, can I do anything with this? So on to the next one. I tried integrating it into the scene and you can see here it's looking 3D-ish. <laughs> and this is where I realized the first problems I was going to get. The background tree and log are still on the background plate and they need to be taken out. So if I pull up Adobe Photoshop, you can see what I've done. So I've got lots of layers here, but the two main layers that we're concentrating on at the moment, here's the background image at the moment. And here it is with all those foreground elements taken out. So I'm just using the patch tool and patching it up and deleting things. So it's very basic and you can certainly see some repetition around the place, but your eye doesn't quite catch it in the final composition. So there's before and there's after. So I've got a background plate now, a proper background plate that I can put this sort of stuff on top of. So let's see how that went. And you can see it's starting to look a bit more realistic. The objects look 3D, although they do look a little bit stuck on, but it just about works. You can obviously see some hard edges here and hard edges down here, but that's something that I can have a go at tidying up. So let's go across into Blender and see how this works. So I'm using 2.8 and I'm using EV. If I use cycles, it would just take way too long to test anything out. So I might go to cycles for the final render, but I'm trying to get away with EV as much as I can. So let's go to rendered mode down here. And here's my camera, which I'll show you in here. You can see the scene, so there's the camera. So we're looking at it from this point of view. And if I go to rendered mode here as well, you can see the huge mess that it creates when it projects. So to start with, I grab my camera and I set up a background image. You can select your camera here and go to the background and then I put the image in. It's really important that you don't move the camera whilst you're projecting, of course. You can move it afterwards once everything's projected, but you can only really move it small amounts unless you've got several angles to project your image from. If I go back to solid mode here, you can see the sort of base that I've made. It's very basic, just sort of a bit of lumpiness for these rocks around here. And then once I've made that, I go into edit mode, U to unwrap and project from view. And can you see it slightly moved there because I didn't have my camera at the beginning of the frame. So unwrap and project from view and it projects that view onto this plane like this, this sort of weird warp thing. But as soon as you get around near the camera, you can see it starts to make sense. Mine's instantly showing the texture because I've hooked it up in the node editor, but of course you have to do that as well. So that is the basics of camera projection. I did the same thing for these trees to start with and this rock here. So in this view, into edit mode and you to unwrap, project from view. And we won't see any changes because it's already happened. Now the trees I did very slightly differently. I did the same sort of thing, 
but as soon as you move around to the edges you start to see this sort of distortion and you can't see it so much on the rock but you would be able to see it on my trees so I actually went to the UV texture painting tab and got a stencil can you see my stencil here and then just painted moved around to the side slightly and painted a bit on so back to layout mode and you can see I've done a few different trees in the background and that was just from experimentation so I started moving around and thinking oh that doesn't look like it's quite working you could argue that this tree could do with being inserted as well and it wouldn't really take that much effort so maybe I'll do that a bit later on but you can start to see where these background trees look flat and obviously these foreground trees look okay so let's go back to Premiere and I'll show you the other tests that I've done so at this point you can see that this rock is very hard in terms of the edge but I managed to soften it up with a transparent text around the edge here so I went into Photoshop and I managed to sort of cut this out and paint it in which you can see just there and I actually kept it the same size so that I could project from view from the camera once again so when I bring my original back you can see it just integrates nicely and I'll be able to draw a plane with an alpha channel and just project from view once again and that's exactly what I did here it's gone a little bit awry around the bottom here and around here but what I'm going to do is put something over the top here just a still image that's blurred in Premiere of some grass or something similar to that just to break it up around the edges so after doing that it's starting to integrate OK did a few more tests and then I put a displacement map with some noise onto the log and the rock to give it a bit of bumpiness around the edge which looks a bit better but then I started to get these glitches as you can see it's sort of wobbling around the place and I could not figure out what on earth that was but I did a few more tests carrying on with some depth of field which I think helps slightly with the foreground elements blurred it does help so the depth of field stays here for the time being and then I tried some camera movement as you can see there just some wobble on the camera to make it look handheld but I don't think that worked so I went back to the original and I tried a different environment texture because of the reflections I wasn't sure if it was integrating that well and I used the back plate as the environment just to see whether that would work it integrates better but actually it looks much worse so I steered clear of that and went back to my original plate tried some fog good old EV fog and volumetrics and that didn't look great so I toned it down a bit and you can see some subtle fog this time possibly works but then it makes my trees stand out a bit more so there's a few attempts at that and here's some even more subtle fog and I think that's working but I'm still getting these funny glitches and like I say that was taking me a long time to figure out what that was and at this point I finally figured it out I took off the depth of field thinking it might be that and a few other things and it was actually the displacement map was animated the noise was animated I don't know whether that's something I've never noticed before because I haven't done enough animation but I couldn't figure out how to turn the animation off the noise so I just used a different texture to offer some bump to this object which looks a bit better but it's not looking as nice as the rock in this area it still looks a bit hard so I continued and tried putting an alpha plane across the top here which I can show you in Blender you can see the plane across the top here and you can see if I go to the overlays you can see it sticking up there and sticking out there and I was having issues with this as well there seems to be a bug in Eevee if I go to shading and I'll just grab it and pull it out and you can see it there now through camera view that should have some depth of field but for some reason if I have show back face ticked then the depth of field won't work if I untick it it goes quite blurry with the depth of field which is great but it just doesn't look as nice so what I had to do was change my image and give it a blurred image for the one that's closer to the camera so that I could use the show back face option so it looked okay so a bit of a hack there I'm not sure it's working for me I've actually reported the bug but they'll probably come back to me and say what are you talking about because it's quite obscure really and you can see it just about working here but there is still a bit of an issue with the edge of this log which I'm not too happy with 
I'm probably again going to use some foliage at the front here, just going up here and around here to break that foreground up. You can probably also see that there's glitches down the side here and there might be some early on. No, that's the only part and that's where my camera is overlapping the original camera. So there's my projection and there it sort of just tiles itself. And I can easily get around that by when I render the final image, just cut my camera down. It's at 50 mil at the moment and I'll just put it to 55 and then that will zoom in just a touch and get rid of any edges that are a bit bad. So there's my lion integrated into the footage looking okay, possibly a bit more work to do. And the next thing to do will be to animate the lion. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.